Welcome back, everybody. I'm Glad now on here. my third 40. Uh, so, you know, you should have said you're on your 120, because that would have been funnier. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think he can count that high. Not right now. I mean, he couldn't even count that high sober, so. <laughs> How dare you! Sorry, I'm back. Welcome I graduated back. from college. I'm respected. That's not what that means. One of those respected. statements is a fair. That is not what that statement means. Respected. Uh, so, the group of you have... Oh, okay, goodbye. Um, <laughs> the group of you have gotten on the road and you're on your way over to... Uh, welcome there. back. Um, you're on your way to Midstog. Um, so during the, uh, during the travels, um, the word has spread that, uh, the Inquisitors are here, right? Like, it's hard to keep it a secret when they're all traveling with you now. Um, and so there are a lot of, uh, a lot of comments about that and how, you know, what's going on with it and... You know, what possibly... Oh, I didn't mean to move the great square. Uh, what it could possibly mean. Why are they here? You know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, mixed reviews. Generally, the Inquisitors exhibit a lot of fear in people. Or, I should say, bring out a lot of fear in people. But some people are actually happy that they're here because they feel safer around them, Right? Uh, they feel like they will, you know, they're going to get rid of all the bad and bring only good. Because um, they're, like, extremely fanatical, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of mixed tensions and relief throughout the, the caravan. Um, how, is the, how is the feeling down in the magic sort of side? Because I imagine there would be a lot of different opinions there. Yeah, so um, the Orders of Magic don't get along with the Inquisitors a whole lot very well at all. Mm -hmm. Um the more religious orders of magic have a little bit better communic or better, you know, interactions with them. Um, but for example, like the, um, first of all, the gray order would never involve themselves with, uh, inquisitors. Um, but there's nobody from the gray order here that you know of. Um, so that's one thing. The second thing is, um, Orders of Magic, like the um, the Jade Order and the Bright Order, and the uh, there's another one. Hold on. Uh, do, 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 do. Jade Order, Bright Order, and Celestial Order uh, get along particularly well with the Inquisitors. Um, the Amethyst Order and the um, Gold Order are probably neutral to bad. Um, the Amethyst Order being basically the Priests of Moor. Uh, they basically have control over the whole thing, and they don't really like people getting involved in their business. And so they see the Inquisitors as kind of a thorn in their side. Um, and then the Gold Order is generally run by um, non-Empire individuals. Uh, there's a lot of Dwarves and Halflings in that Order of Magic, and so they are seen... Um, as not having to be under the control of the Inquisitors a lot, even though it's an it's like an empirical uh, uh, faction, right? Um, a lot of a lot of the leadership there is not from the Empire. Um, but yeah, in general, I think the Inquisitors probably give a leave a bad taste in most of most of the magic world's mouth. Okay, good because I'm glad I'm not alone in that. Yeah, yeah. The last run-in you guys had with Inquisitors didn't end so well. Well, most of them died, so that was an upside. <laughs> True. That is a good point. Um. So, is there anything anybody does on the road to Minstag, or should we just fast forward to there? You know what? One thing I like to do is that I like. How much funds did we exactly get? From the orc stronghold. Um, so you probably got got a finder's fee. 
It's a good. It's a good question. You probably got a finder's fee of a wealth equivalent to about five hundred gold pieces. To be honest with you, I would like to use that to go and um, the guy. That's what the guy offered me for for his piece. Mm -hmm. I like to go and use that to just get that. Uh, in which piece was this? This was that powerful arcana object of at least five hundred. Or well, technically, what it, well, here's what happened. Was that uh, the guy from the Bride Order said it's not worth that much? He's like, all right, I at least need what I paid for it, five hundred gold. Right. And so, like, I'm coming back. as like, listen, I managed to get a five hundred five hundred gold. Could you just get that over? Yeah, I mean, he'll give it to you for five hundred gold. That's what he wanted for it in the first place. Yeah. So yeah, I get that. So that now I can start to do scrying. You absolutely can. Woo! Excellent. What? What is it? What is it, what is it exactly again? It's a crystal. Yeah, it's a crystal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so like the deal was is it's not magical in and of itself, right? Um, even though that's what that's what he was told it was. He was told it was magical, but it's not actually like particularly magical. Um, no, but it, what have, it is what you need to cast your spell, though. Yeah, that's kind of what it was. Is that like? I thought it was. Turns out it wasn't based on what that guy said. Mm-hmm. And uh, what the fuck did I just do? I have no I idea. Just, I, I just wrote that in Rocket's inventory. Um, That's good. Don't know why I did that. He must be on anyway, your mind. I guess. I will admit I've been drinking. <laughs> um, cool. So you, you have that now. Congratulations. So, yeah, I'm going to be using scrying every night, pretty much. Okay. Um, anybody else have anything specific they would like to do? How long is this trip going to mm -hmm. take? Probably take... It took you guys um, two days. Uh, Something like that. So it's probably going to take about three to four days. Yeah. For the, uh, uh, the whole caravan to get there. Yeah. I think I'm going to go talk to Aelin after about a day or two. Okay. So you and Farron, because, you know, I just assume that he's with you at all times now. Um, you find Aelin. Uh, where do they find you, Aelin? In the caravan. Are you riding with, like, the injured to make sure you can handle anything happening or dealing with other things? Or what are you doing? I think that um, Aelin wouldn't be riding. I think that she'd be probably walking um, by those who are either too injured <laughs> to sort of be um, be able to ride with everyone else, but also with the people who, you know, just joined their band without having horses and such. Right. And keeping their spirits up to, obviously, just to be nice, but also to keep the caravan moving because they're the ones that usually slow the caravan down, so mm -hmm. to try to keep them chipper and moving forward okay. <laughs> constantly. So, so that's probably you... the middle or back <laughs> of the caravan. <laughs> yeah, that's where you find her. Okay. So, uh, I would assume that Marilla like, kind of like slows down because she's more up in the front. Uh, I would assume. And eventually when she spots you, Aelin, she probably flags you down. Yeah, Aelin. she's probably holding up a kid, you know, like, you know, picking him up, putting him down, and then she sees you hail her, and she probably puts the kid down and sort of wanders over, because she's on foot. She says, Lady Morella, how, how goes it? I have not spoken with you in quite some time. That is true. Has, and she, like... Seems like she has to think for a moment. Daniela, I think that is her name. Yes, what about her? I suppose then you didn't get my request from her. You didn't. <laughs> well, I was gonna play it off like you did it anyway, but... Oh no, she, she's been very busy. She probably just forgot. Um, can I help you now? <laughs> Now would probably be an opportune time for you. But I ask of her to ask of you 
to give me full medical reports on all the injured. Right now. As I said, it would be an inopportune time at the moment. I suppose when we get to men in stock and you have settled. Yes, that is something absolutely I can do. Uh, is there anything in particular you would like to know? There are many injured. It will take Full quite reports. some time. Oh, okay. So, sure. Yes, of course. And Aelin's like incredibly confused by this because really, unless you're a medical professional, there's really no reason why you would need this information. But sure, she's willing to oblige. This, so I think she kind I of mean, just looks at you like, okay, sure. Th yeah. There's also a reason why Daniela didn't tell you. Well, which that's you can just, which I realize later. now after I know the request, but sure. Right. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. That, that, that's my response. She nods and it seems to have brightened her just a little bit. Uh, I, think, I think at that point, Aelin would kind of lean over, you know, do, do the side head and say, hello, Farron. <laughs> good to see you too. Farron, do you have a piece of wood that you're writing on because you're always writing now? Yeah, it's... I'm having to practice uh, crossing my T's and dot the I's. Like, just you mean crossing be... the I's and dotting the T's? Indeed. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, yes, uh, Aileen. Uh, good to see you. Looks like you are in good health. As best as I can be, you know, keep myself together. Is there anything else you guys need from me, or can I get back to you? And she kind of just, like, gestures vaguely in the other direction. <laughs> yeah, and she, Marley, I think, like, looks forward, and she's like, uh, How are you, Aelin? Oh, I'm, I'm quite all right. I'm in fairly good health, and it is not raining. It is a good day, so... Yes, I'm quite fine. Thank you for asking. Good. Come, Farron. I suppose that we should get back up to the front. Have a good day, and Alan. Be sure that everyone is safe. And then she walk, uh, begins to trot off. Of course, Lady Morella. Have a good. And then, like, you kind of hear her voice trail off. <laughs> yep. Oh, well, not okay. Uh, anything else anybody else does on the road while they're out and about? Yo. So, so what I mean by that, um, Hannibal, is that's not something you'd be able to find on the road. Oh yeah, okay. You would not um, have to wait till we set up camp. Yeah, you'd have to wait till you set up camp, and it's gonna be a long shot, right? Like that's the that's the other thing. Well, my hope, my what I'm banking on is the fact that he's fucking famous. True. No, absolutely. And, like, in fact, you have a better bet of, like, actually in Middenstog finding that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, actually in in that location finding what you need. So. Mm -hmm. um, yes. One thing I like to do really quickly is just check in with um... Daniela? No. Well, that too, but I imagine she's probably, like, right near me anyway, so... But, um, I wanted to go searching for Ariel. Uh, which one is Ariel? Um, the... the mermaid, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> the mermaid we picked up, like, an hour ago. Um, the hedge witch who knows me? Uh... The family friend oh who right happens to be for, traveling with our party for some for reason, reason i didn't write her name down i'm not sure why that's right her name was ariel and she was Ooh. the hedge witch from your background i forgot i did that i remember why i did that but i forgot that i had done it <laughs> okay okay <laughs> i don't know if that's a good or bad thing but okay <laughs> uh-huh yep so uh you're gonna go I find mean, her i just wanted to check in with her because obviously she's a slightly more important person to me in this caravan. I just want to make sure she's being cared for. Yeah, so she is quite elderly. Um, although she isn't, right? Because that's that's the thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. She appears to be quite elderly, and that's why you didn't recognize her at first. Um, because she was perhaps in her late 20s, early 30s when she was caring for you, and now she looks as though she's in her 
late seventies, early eighties, and that time just doesn't make sense, right? Um. So yeah, you can see that uh, there is there's a there's a young boy, probably about twelve, eleven or twelve. Um, you recognize him vaguely from Middleweg, and uh, he appears to be when when you when you find Ariel, um, he appears to be helping her with her things. Um, and she, like, probably as you walk up and she, like, you know, pats him on the head and, uh, kind of scoots him on his way. And, uh, as you walk up, she goes, oh, my, my dear Aelin, it is, la Lady Ash River, it is good to see you. How oh, please, you can just call me Aelin. I'm glad to see that you are right and that you've conscripted some help. And she, like, points to the boy. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh, don't mind him. He's just, he's just a helpful young man. He's hoping to fight, although I've told him that is ill-advised. Well, I'm glad to see someone is taking care of you. I admitted that I have not come to see you as often as I'd like. I apologize for that. Oh, it's, it's not your duty, Lady Ash River. You have ma ma many other things to do here. But you are doing okay. This travel isn't wearing you out. Oh, no, no. I am quite used to moving about. Although, I will say that having to keep pace is something I am not quite used to. But all, all is well with me. And how about you? He then pauses for a moment and says... She kind of, like, looks around. And, um... I, I think that she probably gives her a little, like, signal, kind of like, you know, the old school, like, finger to the nose kind of thing, but I assume something from her childhood that the two of them used to do to, like, you know, send secret messages that she didn't want her mom or dad to know. That yeah, she is it, like, itch, like, itch the inside of your yeah, ear or, or something? Yeah, like, pull the earlobe kind of a deal. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Thing. Uh, and then um, say, there is some news that I like, wish to share with you before it gets out. Um, why don't we, uh, and she kind of, like, takes her arm and gestures farther away from the caravan a little bit to chat. Yeah, so you, like, you know, you, you take her arm in arm so you can support her, and she kind of, like, walks over. She's got that little, um, the short, like, little, uh, club-like walking stick, um, that is only probably up to, like, her, uh, up to her waist, but she's hunched over a bit, and so she's kind of plodding along with it. And, uh, once you get to, like, a secluded area away from the rest of the caravan. Um, what do you say to her? I've been given some troubling news that I wish to share with you in person, not with all the others as we are planned to do later. Uh, we have heard news that and she like really really hunches down towards her ear <laughs> um, and says uh, that the emperor has passed and just kind of looks at her to see her reaction yeah and so i think her eyes go a bit wide um and uh she pulls out she pulls out a little pendant off a necklace that you you like it almost triggers something in your memory but you're not sure what but roll a religion check and we'll see if you can remember what Ooh. So you remember that it represents a um, it represents a uh, a goddess, but you don't remember which one. You don't remember which one from like the story she used to tell you and stuff like that. Um, and she pulls it out and she presses it to her lips and and she tucks it back into her uh, to her shirt. And uh, <laughs> she says she's like oh. My dear, that is terrible news. Magnus, the Emperor, was quite a dear saint. It is sad to see him go. He was... He was too young for his time. Yes, indeed so. I just wanted to tell you beforehand, you know, allow you some time to prepare yourself. Yes, indeed. I will... I will say my prayers to it. But... Tell me, why why is this not public information? 
It will be soon enough. We just didn't want it running rampant, especially when we're on the move and under uh, tumultuous circumstances. Yeah, and I think she gives you, um, she gives you kind of a look, uh, and then probably says a proverb, uh, something along the lines of secrets don't make friends, right? Um, like the, uh, in fact, actually what she says is, she probably says, the only one a secret hurts is those that do not know. I think that kind of stings. <laughs> Aelin a little bit, and uh, she nods and says, it's just not entirely my decision to make. But yes. it is what it is. I understand, I understand. Well, it is a sad day, then. And will be a sad few weeks, but perhaps... Perhaps there are good to come of all things. Hope stands tall no matter the situation. Isn't that true? Yeah. Um, yeah, and she just kind of nods and uh, kind of pulls out like a kerchief and like blots her head when she's sweating a little bit from the sun um, and kind of like shoves it back down her sleeve and she says, well, sh shall we join the others? We wouldn't yes, want yes, them to start talking of us, and she kind of, like, gives you, like, a a wink. <laughs> yes, of course. We wouldn't want to start any rumors. She kind of just <laughs> leads her back. Yeah. And you, so you guide her back into the caravan and continue on your way. Uh, Arkady or Cree, do you guys have anything that you would like to do during your travel? Nope. Okay. Nothing's coming to mind. Okay. So, we'll go ahead and fast forward over to the arrival at Middenstag. Um, so when you, when you all arrive at Middenstag, um, obviously scouts have been sent ahead to prepare the way, and... It's also obvious that the entire army is not going to be able to camp inside of the city, right? Um, it's not that large. Uh, but as you guys are riding up, those of you that are riding at the front with, like, the nobles, um, Sir Bryce actually uh, comes from the gates to greet um, the nobles. And uh, you can see he comes up and gives a very low bow on his horse to, um, to Lord Cahill, who gives him... a generous bow himself um and uh there's a brief conversation where Cahill is just like you know thank you for staying thank you for allowing us to you know pass through uh the the traditional like thanks for being here we're you know thankful for the supplies you've given us any men that you can spare would we would love to come with us etc cetera, etc cetera. but basically like he's asking but he's also telling like he's asking for it and if you don't comply he'll take it right um it's basically just giving the courtesy to the town to make them feel like it was voluntary <laughs> even though it's not really um but he performs his duties admirably and sir bryce performs them immediately back just as admirably and yeah and uh the nobles are set up in the uh in the inn um which uh just just to throw it back to the just to give a flashback back to the past uh, you guys know oh, this map? Damn. Yeah. Uh, I found it today, actually. Oh. Really old, uh, the old listing. I actually had to delete all of the old tokens, but I didn't delete some, uh, just for just for, you know. Uh, and this is all this is for everyone but Megan, obviously, but if you guys want to see it's something. Like, I don't remember. Because yeah. you weren't oh. there! If you guys wanna if you guys you wanna see there. That's how old this map is. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Think about that for a second. Well, so if you guys want to see something honest, awesome, this map was from, God, uh, I want to say December. Look at this, guys. Uh, Look at these guys. Remember these oh. guys? <laughs> oh, oh, oh no! Uh, uh, remember, remember MVP right here? Yeah, MVP. <laughs> yeah. This was this was the town where our our halfling paladin crit the fuck out of that minotaur. Uh, yeah, right in the balls. Uh, it's right weird balls. to think that all that us five have been together for that long. Yeah, yep. 
So gross. I mean, I'd never realized how long an online party could last. Hey. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's been a long, long time. I think with this month and also, I think this week, it's been a year and a half. I don't know if you guys even remember this, but uh, you remember these guys? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, they were still on the map too when I opened it up today. The fucking oh. goats we saved? Yep. <laughs> the yeah, blind man. goats. Yep, they were blind, that's right. Yep, they had all been, their eyes had all been uh, cut out. That was yep. fun. But, uh, anyway, blast from the past. Uh, okay. Just to let you know. But I'm giving you this because there is a wall up now. That is the thing denoted by the brown line. Um, and also to note that the tents are now basically turned into hard buildings and all of those, all the tribesmen that were here the one time, um, they are now, uh, they're still here, so. Mm -hmm. uh, but they now act as more of a, um, more of an actual, uh... Defense force? Yeah, they, they actually live in the town and are productive towns members. Not a whole lot of people live outside of town anymore. Um, so it's grown a little bit. And that's cool. Look, this is actually Sir Bryce's original token, too. Yep. So. Yep. Uh, and also, Lord Ryan is dead, so that doesn't exist anymore. But it's still his house, <laughs> so there you Wait, go. Wait, did he die? Uh, you guys saved him barely, but he died afterwards due to other circumstances. Now Bryce runs I, the town. I don't um, think we were there for that. You were not. No. Yep. But the Ruddy Sword Tavern, that's right here. That's where all the nobles are staying tonight, basically. Mm -hmm. Um... Also, this was around the place where I set foot big, set free Bigfoot. It sure was. Maybe he'll come to aid us in an hour of need. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so great. Yep. We may never know. Um. He's so. No. So the group of you arrive at the at Min's dog and, um you know, set to setting up at camp because from here um, is not a, not a bad place to rest for a little while and to, you know, try and, like, gain supplies from around the, the area because from here um, you have a couple of options. So marching, like, through Untergard and Grimmenhagen and Harsum up to Holzbeck um, is, I think, the path that you guys were thinking about taking. But you'll notice... Uh, you'll remember I have these two orange um, things here. So those were those were potential quests that you guys wanted to complete. Um, and so here in the forested area, I believe we were looking to see, um, looking to possibly make it a like a, a place where we could harvest a bunch of things for siege engines, right? Because it's one of the closest forested areas to. Um, to Middenheim, and in addition to that, it needs to be secured before we can do that kind of thing, and we don't really know what's going on there. Um, and then up here, uh, we wanted to investigate because it's the big open area that's kind of on the way to Middenheim, so it would actually be a fairly good staging area for, like, the bulk of the army in general. Um, and so we were also exploring there, uh, and those were the potential quests. I'm just reminding people of that when we get to that point. Um, but the, the pass from here, you could obviously go through Untergard and Grimmenhagen and stuff like that and go along the roadway, but the army could march straight up the path kind of through this direction. Um, it would probably slow you down a bit, but your movements might be more concealed from, you know, those, uh, that may be watching you. So that's a thing to consider as well. Um, but regardless... You guys have arrived in Middenstag. Hooray, happy days to be had all around. Uh, and I think that that night, um, uh, Aelin and Arkady, the two of you are summoned to um, the... Actually, you're probably summoned to the, the common room of the Ruddy Sword Tavern, right? That's probably taken a... That's probably taking the... Like, the war room is taking place there now, right? Instead of in a tent outside. Because um, the nobles have basically taken over the inn as their own, and they're going to be utilizing that while they stay in this town. Solid walls. We're moving up in the world. Moving up in the world. Not sleeping in the cold. Uh, although it's actually quite warm out nowadays uh, when it comes to temperature. 
Um, you, you know, global warming. You know. Right, and also it's like <laughs> the equivalent of June or July or something like that. But yeah, um, fires so, of chaos. Right, yeah, the fires of chaos. Right? They warm the cackles of my soul. Um, so you guys arrive, and inside uh, you meet with um, uh, Gruthin, the high priest of Moor. And um, Cahill is there, obviously. Uh, but also, um, there is a... Appears to be a um, minstrel there, as well. Because uh, you, could, you could tell he's a minstrel because he's got, like... Um, he's got, like, a, uh, uh, a harp and uh, um, a lyre and perhaps a flute or something like that. Um, you don't recognize him haven't really seen him anywhere before uh but he is also in attendance at this meeting and uh is speaking with Cahill um when you guys enter and when you enter uh Cahill stands up and he comes over and he he greets you both um and asks you to come sit at the table and it's kind of just the the group of you um and uh Cahill says um this is this is my friend Gerald he he will be composing a a fitting ballad for um, the unfortunate loss of our beloved emperor. But I was wondering if we could get a, well, an update on where we stand. And he kind of like looks to the, the three of you. I guess Aelin would speak first. <laughs> um, I think she would say, well, the high priest and I spoke earlier. I believe we are on the same page and ready whenever you are to give our sermon. I think it should be done sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, and I think that uh, Gruthin, he probably like nods his head emphatically and he says, Yes, yes, it's better to tell them than to leave them waiting and wondering. Uh, excuse me, I'm just a little confused here. Was there something specific uh, you expected Petrov to be doing? Yeah, so, well, Petrov was going to assist with, like, the writing of the letter to the queen. Right. Um, but he also, he trusts your uh, judgment a lot, and you're the one that advised him to bring in Aelin, so he's kind of using you as yeah, an advisor okay. in this situation. Okay, fair And enough. perhaps a mediator, because he's not unaware of the tension between the two factions here yeah okay uh, um, but it's totally appropriate not to comment as well yeah if if Petra was going to say anything you'd probably say if uh, minds are brought to alignment on this point of telling the soldiers then perhaps now as we are settling into more comfortable and defensible locale this is mo this is time when they would be uh, best prepared to bear it yeah um, I think that uh, Cahill takes in all of that and he says yes yes I have I've been preparing a few words but well I hope that the men accept them as as readily as they will, I'm sure, accept from the two of you. And he kind of, like, looks at uh, the two priests and priestess in the room. Um, and he says, uh, he says, but no matter. Tonight we should focus on getting settled in. Perhaps at sundown tomorrow. Or should it be sunrise? I'm not sure. Perhaps the rising of the sun would be more appropriate. What do you think? And he kind of like looks at the three of you again. I always pick sunrise over sunset. Yeah. Interesting. And I, I think that the, I think that um, the pre, the high priest of Moore, he probably looks and he says, the sun setting is more appropriate. It is the ending of an age and the beginning of a new one. I believe it is important to recognize that. Quite apart from symbolism, if we tell them in the morning, then it hangs over the day, but 
the army is focused on duties and this attention that must be drawn. Conversely, we tell them at end of day and a greater number may be free to grieve as they best see fit, yes? Yeah, so, so, like, it's it's this, like, there wasn't really a correct answer given, right? Um, so I think that Cahill probably, like, kind of mulls it over in his head and is thinking, and he says, ah, yes, well, I'm sure that can be decided. I will let you all know before it occurs, but be ready at earliest by sunrise the day after tomorrow. Of course. Uh, during our travel here, I did take opportunity to draft potentials for uh, potential messages to uh, Her Highness in Kislev. Um, if you would care to look these over. Yeah, and I think he, he nods and he says, yes, yes, I would, I would very much appreciate that. Thank you, Ambassador. And he kind of like extends his hand to, to take the papers yeah. and pass that over to him. Yeah, and he begins like kind of reading through them and nodding his head and he says, ah yes, many different types of answers here I see, but all leading to the same question. Ah, perhaps if there is nothing else I will claim some of your personal time, Ambassador, that we may speak these over and decide which may be best. Uh, naturally, at your leave. Yeah, and so you kind of take it as a dismissal of the priests and priestess in the room um, so that he can talk to uh, Petrov. Um, Gerald, the minstrel, kind of gets up and kind of dusts off his his overcoat and gives a very low, flourishing bow and um, departs upstairs to one of the rooms. Um, and it should be noted he remains silent kind of the whole time. Uh, and when it's just the two of you alone, he says... Um, so, Ambassador, be frank with me now. What do you think that the Queen would respond to as if, let's just theoretically say, from an equal? Would she respect a strengthening resolve? A heartfelt, mournful tone? I say that one of my failings is I've never met your current queen. Although I understand that there is a term, and uh, please don't mind any offense, and I'm not sure if it is derogatory or not, but that they call her the Ice Queen. This is <laughs> by no means derogatory. Her Highness is magnificently known for mastery over the, the colder arcana. It is point of pride. But if she were to see the letter writer as an equal, then hmm, certainly honesty in mourning, if this is what the writer should feel. But the point that must be made is more one of continuation assurance that there shall be no great upheaval in the friendship of Kislev and the Empire with the coming of a new Emperor. Yeah, and I think he nods and kind of smiles and he says, as well it should be. She must look out for her people first. And I think a very simple letter may be may suffice. From what you say, she does not seem the type to take well to flourishes and, dare I say, flattery. Not one whose head is easily turned. This is well. Thank you, Ambassador. I will consider what you've told me. Uh, then I guess he'll depart. Mm-hmm. And so you walk out into the, uh, into the night. Um... So, for the for the rest of you that are uh, out there, 
um, Cree, would you go into the town at all while you're here? Uh, probably not. Uh, I would probably spend some time uh, just kind of recuperating and talking with uh, the skink leadership. Okay, yeah. Um, so I think that as you're, you know, just like kind of talking and discussing, um, they bring to your attention a couple of uh, a couple of interesting notes. Um, there is some dissension among the ranks as to uh, the amount of time this is going to all take. Um, the Saurus are generally too stupid to understand what's going on, but um, it appears that some of the skinks have, uh, have, you know, kind of taken offense to this not being over yet. And obviously it's just started. It's only been, you know, a couple of weeks since they were joined up. But um, this may be a, a fault of not being told exactly what they were getting into. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. And I think that it's coming across more as a perhaps a um, a boast. Uh, there are probably some skinks within the ranks who are like, you know, well, if I was in charge of this racket, we would have taken that city all well and claimed it in the name of Chotek. You know, like, kind of, kind of that, like, almost blaming the, the humans and their leadership for um, the pace that is being set. Uh, mm -hmm. And they assure you that they've dealt with the disciplinary action, but it is something to mull over in the back of your mind that it may be a problem in the future. Um, or, you know, promote it. Or whatever. <laughs> right. Or, or that, right? Like, you may spur spur them into performing acts of heroism by doing that, right? At the expense of their... At the expense of maybe their... Uh, um, their views on humans, right? They may be spurred but, into uh, acts of heroism that they wouldn't before in order to prove these boasts that they make. Mm -hmm. So, there is a thing to consider there. Um... Excellent. Fantastic. So, probably later in the night, um, one of the, uh, one of the skanks comes to you, um, at your tent and kind of like is, you know, uh, you're, you're probably just getting ready for bed, not quite asleep. Um, and he comes in and he says, ah, Cree, it is, it is I, what, do, do you have a moment? Of course. Let's speak. Quick. There is... There's something I must tell you. Some of... Well, I think some of the men have gone off on their own... Uh, eh, mission, perhaps. But some of the men are missing. Do you know where they headed? What their objective was? No, but speaking with their... Battle Brothers, I have found out that they they perhaps were thinking of going on a scouting mission that was not assigned. They wish to know the area more. As you know, we are far from home, but in these lands it is possible to find temples of our people. I believe that is what they may have gone to find. <sighs> you All right. You should know, leader, that I do not fear for their safety. It is only what what they may find or not find. When the when the morning comes, we will organize a official party to go and find these fools. Yes, leader. I understand. And he kind of, like, backs out of the tent. Um. Cool. Awesome. So, 